So I just said that this is our first little example of this idea of use arithmetic with omega to organize recursive iteration. Not quite true, um, except we've actually done it twice now, but one was a, a very degenerate example. If you remember, the very first time omega appeared, psi of omega, we defined that to be the limit of iterating psi. Now, it was iterating just psi alone, not combined with any anything involving omega yet, because omega was brand new, but it really, it does follow the same pattern. So here it's um, an iteration of psi composed with h, where h is just the identity function. Okay, so that's really the, the very baseline example of creating something new using iterating psi. And that was, that's pretty important because that's where we really started getting into the new territory, um, where we had some, some idea that we might create some some big stuff. Um, and then this, the second example is what I just showed you, where h of x is the most basic, simple arithmetic we could do involving omega, which is to, just omega plus x. And that's where we're iterating um, the one we just talked about. So if you want, if we want to be really honest, we, we actually had seen one before. So um, what about, well, let me uh, take the invisibles out here. Um, what about g? What about g of psi of omega 2? Okay, well, that's not too uh, too hard to understand. Um, we're iterating this process, and each time we're iterating it, we are we're start, so we're starting with psi of zero, and we know that that has a g value of n uh, double up n, and then we are doing psi of omega plus that. Well, we have a rule of psi of omega plus something. Okay, um, and so we found what did we find before? Um, we were getting up to, when we did this process, like, uh, with three omegas, we found that we had gotten up to n triple up n plus three. And then if we do it again, we can predict exactly the same kind of calculation. It's going to get it up to n triple up n plus four, n triple up n plus five, okay? And by definition, the nth term of this fundamental sequence is just this uh, concatenation of size and omegas with n omegas. And there's some convent this choices about whether it's n or n minus 1 omegas. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, so let me come back down. Okay, so what we're going to get is just n triple up n plus n, or in other words, n triple up 2n. So it's exactly just um, the generalization of the story that I had um, in the middle of the last video. Okay, so what have we got here? Um, we always want to stop when we get a new g value to see, you know, what is this, what is this telling us? And in particular, get a tiny little sense of what it tells us about f. So we've gone significantly, but not radically beyond omega in the input of psi. So instead of just psi of omega, which was a very important landmark, we're going up to psi of omega plus omega. That's definitely more significant than omega plus 1, or omega plus 2, or even omega, big omega plus little omega, or even big omega plus like epsilon naught. Um, and so, and what do we notice in terms of the, the out, the G value? Well, it's still only at the triple up level, but we have doubled the sensitive input. And so I'd say that's a significant, but not radical increase in G. And of course, a significant increase in G is a shadow of a ridiculously huge increase in F. So let's actually look at F, um, go back to thinking, trying to think about f and huge numbers, which after all is the title of the videos, okay? So let's, let's get a sense of this. There's absolutely no possibility we can even write out the full initial expansion of f um, for any decently sized number like n equals 3 because that's pretty darn big in terms of actually writing something out. But let's look at some, look, look, get a taste of what's going on and analyze it a little bit. So I'm going to use n equals 2, which I typ typically avoid because sometimes it's kind of degenerate, but I don't want this to be any more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, so f of omega, f of psi of omega 2, well the expansion of that is you start with psi of 0, you do the omega plus and the psi, and then you do it one more time and that's it. And then we're going to look at that, and we're going to look at the f value of that with the two input. Okay, so I'm going to abbreviate alpha. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate this thing as alpha. And somewhat just sort of say, hey, that's, um, that's some countable ordinal. Let's just know that it's a fairly big countable ordinal. What's, what's it going to do? So the first thing, of course, is one of our rules is when you have psi of a sum, and it's in, written in the standard form, and this totally is, because omega always um, is bigger than anything that psi could produce, which is by definition what alpha is. Um, it's a countable ordinal. 
you just work, you just do this fundamental sequence for that second part alpha. Okay, so in other words, we really might as well just look at, hey, what if somebody had actually said, what about f of alpha comma two? Just that, and see what happens. Okay, so that's f of psi of omega plus psi of zero. Again, it's psi of omega plus something countable. So we're going to work on this guy. Oh, I think I just copied that and didn't change it. Okay. Um, so psi of zero, of course, is just a shorthand for epsilon naught. Uh, the two ver the two thing in the fundamental sequence for that is omega the omega. Again, different conventions exist about that, but I think it's going to be about the right kind of thing to do when that's omega the omega. And that, in a couple of steps, just degen degenerates down to omega plus two. So this, with two here, there's some calculations that really actually don't produce absolutely impressive results. Omega to the omega, the epsilon naught, in principle, can produce devastatingly huge uh, results. But here, just putting a two into it, it doesn't. Okay, but that, that's going to be enough for us. Okay, so what does that look like? Now, we've at a nice stage, because we've, we've got psi of omega plus a successor ordinal. Anytime any part of one of these calculations get to a successor, that's where the flavor changes, and suddenly it's like, oh, hey, yeah, what was the successor rule for that? Okay, well, the successor rule for that is if you're looking at the two term of psi of a successor, you just look at psi of its predecessor raised to its, itself. So you start, we're going to start building a tower of exponentials. Okay, now this in the exponential slot is a successor ordinal. So that, the two element of that fundamental sequence is just psi of big omega plus little omega to itself. Okay, that is omega plus a, a limit ordinal. That just goes down to a 2, omega plus 2. That's a successor. Uh, where are we? Um, yeah, right here. Okay. So that turns into, hopefully the font isn't getting too small, psi of omega plus 1 to the psi of omega plus 1. That's a successor. So psi of omega plus 1 turns into psi of omega plus itself. Ooh, okay. Now what's psi of omega? Oh yeah, that was an iterated psi. So now... We're going back to that other rule, the very, very base case of that other rule of iterating psi. So notice the alternation here between uh, successors. There's three kinds of things. There's successor ordinals turning into, let's expand the tower of, of um, exponents further. There's limit ordinals, like just ordinary countable limit ordinals, like psi of omega, turning into, here it was turning into psi of omega plus 2, and then that immediately turned into psi of omega plus 1 to, to stuff. And then the, uh, the third piece is that sometimes we get down to one of these ones where we need to go back to the, the really powerful rule, which is iterate psi. Okay, so that turns into a psi of omega plus omega to the omega here. Phew, okay, this is, you know, even with a 2, a measly 2 in here, you get a sense this is going to be very powerful. So let's just focus on the very top part of that. Let's just say, well, what if, what if you had just f of psi of omega to the omega? Well, that's not ridiculously huge with a 2 input, okay? Again, now this guy, uh, we don't have any iteration of psi anymore. It's just, um, just a psi of uh, countable ordinals, which may be successors or limits. Omega plus 2 is a successor, so you get um, something to itself. Omega plus 1 is a successor, so that you get omega, psi of omega to itself, but then just little omega now. That little omega turns into a 2. Then that turns into, whoops, sorry, didn't want to go that down that far. That turns into psi of 1 to the psi of 1. Okay, the psi of 1 turns into a psi of 0. Whew, but still, okay, that's still going to gonna bust out with an omega to the omega. That will turn into omega plus 2, because omega to the omega at the 2 level isn't super impressive. Whew, okay. Now this is a good place to pause. We've actually got, now we've got a, a tower of ordinals just using ordinary ordinal exponentiation on um, countable ordinals, and there's a successor ordinal at the top of the tower. And now if we wanted to continue that, we could actually start using just plain old rules of exponents to start breaking that out. And we've seen examples of that a bit in, in, in a few videos ago, okay? So I'm not gonna continue that expansion. But I just want to point out that we're not even remotely done here, even expanding the f. And that was just for a very small piece, f of psi of omega to the omega comma 2, which was a small piece of f alpha comma 2, which was that stage where we had done psi of 0 and just one application of psi of big omega plus x. 
again with just a two, a measly two input. And then that's a piece, a small piece of the real thing, which was f of psi of big omega two, comma two. Okay. So one of the ways I doing this, you know, thinking about this um, the last few weeks, I I kind of got in the sense like it was like zooming into a fractal if you have one of those programs where you can zoom and zoom and zoom into a cool fractal like the Mandelbrot set or something like that. Um, the hope is not to just look at the initial Mandelbrot set and just say, oh, I get it. I get all of the complexity that is in this object. There's no way you can do that. But you just pick a point and you say, oh, I'm going to zoom into there for a while and get a sense of what's going on. Like we zoomed in, instead of trying to analyze this completely and understand it completely, we zoomed in a bit at chose this level and say, oh, you know, can I understand that a little bit? And then we that led us to zoom in on a tinier piece here. And the whole thing is the the amalgamation, you know, the combination of all of that stuff. And you just can't hold it in your head all at once. So I think that's kind of an interesting metaphor. Now, with a fractal, if it's a true, you know, fractal, you can zoom in in principle infinitely and you never actually hit bottom. Now, in principle, any one of these things, you do hit bottom. You could actually say, well, in principle, this is just the successor operation, just adding one to ordinary finite numbers a bunch of times, because it's all defined from f, f sub zero. But of course, the whole point of these things is, practically speaking, no being we could almost conceive of um, could actually do that. And so it's really, it is really like zooming into a fractal and saying, you know, for all practical purposes, there's no bottom to this anymore. We cannot hit bottom, but we can at least get pieces of the expansion story. Okay, so, and we can do it a little more systematically. Um, even if you're interested in F, of course, G is really important because we, we found out that G was important because it's a measure of how how complicated the expansion process is for F. And we can do that without um, doing the whole expansion process. So for example, let's let beta is just uh, B psi of zero, just to give kind of a, a generic name to it. And um, this is that, this is alpha, psi of omega plus beta. And what happens if you just expand that, and I just want to focus on how complex the expansion is. So I'm just going to basically rewriting a previous stage of what we just had. Um, we have psi of omega plus beta one, which I'm going to use as a, a notation for the first predecessor ordinal in the chain, right? So that took psi of zero, that gets demoted to omega to the omega, that gets demoted, demoted to omega squared, that gets demoted, demoted to omega two, that gets demoted to omega, omega plus two, but that wasn't a predecessor, that was a step from a limit to, it, to its fundamental sequence. The first thing it actually comes in as a predecessor, using the predecessor rule is omega plus one. And that's exactly what showed up. Let me go back to it, right? Here's that psi of omega plus one. Actually, it's really showing up way up here. Yeah, it's here it is, okay? There's that omega plus one that showed up as the first thing that actually stayed in place without getting knocked off in the initial expansion process, okay? And this is a very general thing, um, is that when you have addition, when you have anything plus anything, pretty much, as long as it's in the, the usual standard form, um, what happens is you're going to knock this down by limit steps, if necessary, until you've knocked it down by a predecessor step, and then you're going to use some sort of predecessor rule. Okay, so then what was the what was the next thing on the top of that? It was psi of omega plus the next predecessor down, which happened to be omega. Then that was raised to psi of omega plus the next predecessor down, which was one. Right? Remember, when we're using n equals two, omega gets knocked down to a two, but immediately that got got re-expressed as psi of omega plus one to itself. And so the, the omega plus two actually doesn't stay in the expansion. And then of course it gets knocked down to zero. All right, so this is a very, very simple example, very, very low numbers. The chain for the two chain for epsilon naught is actually very, very short. It just has four elements. And what is that? That's exactly G beta of two. That's the definition of G beta of two is how many things are in this chain? How many actual honest God predecessors are in the chain? Um, or let's say, how many times did we do a predecessor step, really? Um, now, remember, if n is anything bigger than 2, we actually get repeats here. So I don't think I'm going to do an explicit example. But if n was greater than 2, we'd get like this thing um, reappearing. It would appear in this tower of exponentials 
n minus 1 times, and then you'd see this one in the tower of exponentials, n minus 1 times, and this one. So 2 is a little bit special, is that this ordinal actually changes at every step, but it gives you the idea. Okay, so um, what this is saying is that in any, even if you just want to understand a small piece of how f is going to be evaluated and you know expanded out in for the purpose of evaluating, even a small piece of that is going to have to do with g of some piece of what you're putting into f. I didn't, it wasn't so much g of omega plus beta, well that wouldn't make any sense, but it wasn't g of psi of omega plus beta, I was just focusing on g of beta first. Okay, so let's look at the next one, for example. The, the full expansion uh, so far, this is the fullest one we got, psi of omega, omega 2 itself, okay, um, that of course was, came down to f of psi of omega plus alpha, comma 2. Okay, and that alpha is this thing, which is definitely bigger than just psi of 0. Well, what did the expansion look like there? Or what would it look like there? Okay, again, alpha is this complicated ordinal. Um, but it's a countable ordinal, and it's appearing as omega plus. And so when you actually do the expansion, I'm not going to actually show you what alpha 1 is. Uh, it's pretty darn complicated. But um, in principle, whatever alpha 1 is, it's the first predecessor in the chain coming down from psi of big omega plus psi of 0. And then that's going to get raised to alpha 2, which is the second predecessor, which is going to ra get raised to psi of omega plus alpha 3, etc. And then eventually it's going to get down to psi of big omega. Now that's still a big deal. That's still a complicated thing that needs to be expanded. But this at least gives you an idea, again, like the zooming into the fractal thing, just of what the first expansion is going to look like. And it's a very, very general thing about this and also about the Veblen story, um, that at any stage of the expansion, look at some piece of it, look at g of that with the appropriate n value that you're using, that's going to tell you sort of how big the next phase of expansion is going to get. And then, of course, it's very unlikely that you actually have grounded out at zero. And then that's going to expand in its own way, that's going to expand in its own way, that's going to expand in its own way. All right, so now, here, um, g of alpha 2, actually, we could actually calculate it exactly, and it's not a really huge number. Just because n equals 2, it tends to be so degenerate for things like double ups, triple ups, stuff like that. Um, and, but remember, the, the thing that makes f big is not just that this expansion is impressive, which it's already mild, at least moderately impressive. It's that you've got like a, an unexpanded psi of omega plus alpha 1. Okay, alpha 1 is only a little bit smaller than this big ordinal, and it is waiting for a huge, huge, huge n to get put into it for the re-expansion process. And all of these guys are waiting for that. And so this guy is going to end up seeing that pretty early in the, or I don't know, in the middle of the stage or whatever. That's going to just be incredible re-expansion. And then go down and down and down. And the last one that's going to sort of get um, to see an n value and get re-expanded is this thing. And that's just going to start almost exactly as big a process of re-expansion as we had for the original re-expansion, but with a much huger n value. And then you're really going to be huge. Okay, so it's going to expand out. So like this one, for example, that's going to expand out in its own tower. And we know the height. We actually have a prediction of the height of the tower when it actually gets re-expanded. It's g of that ordinal alpha 1, comma n. We know that's something like n with triple ups attached to it, like n triple up n stuff, okay? And that's just how big the tower is just to ground out at psi of omega, which is still big. And that's after you've done all the expansions of everything else. So, wow, that gives you a little taste of how incredibly big. F is going to be. All right, good place to stop.